In this section, I'm going to talk about uh, nozzles and diffusers. And as you might expect, these two things do um, very different um, jobs. In fact, they, um, they do the opposite of each other, as we'll see. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, nozzles and diffusers and their function. And to do this, I'm going to give you the example of this um, turbocharger here. Um, now this is a device that you get on an um, internal combustion engine and the aim of this is to boost the air pressure going into the engine to help get more power from the engine. So as you look at it, flow, um, the air flows from right to left as you look at it. And the air comes into the um, compressor on this side. Um, the air is accelerated up to high speed where it enters this um, intake manifold going into the engine. And as it does it, the air is compressed and um, its pressure increases. Um, so you get a higher um, mass of air in the engine and hence more power from the engine. Now the other side of the um, uh, the turbocharger is um, this hot side. And on this side we've got a turbine. And the exhaust gases that come out of the engine come into this little manifold here. Here the gas is accelerated onto the um, turbine blades here. They impart the momentum, causing that to spin, and then the gases exit the, the device. And because the um, compressor and the turbine are on a common shaft, the, as the turbine spins, it um, turns the compressor and compresses more air going into the engine. Okay, so what's this got to do with nozzles and diffusers? Well, let's just talk about nozzles in general terms. So what a nozzle is, is it's... Um, essentially the um, reduction of cross-sectional area with distance um, and what that has the, the effect of is it converts high pressure low speed flow into low pressure high speed flow and so there's the i've got an example of the so if you use now example of the um, turbocharger over here you can see that on the compressor um, sorry on the turbine side on the exhaust side there is a nozzle here so you can see that because of the shape of this um, uh, structure here, you have high pressure. And as it goes through, as, as the cross-sectional area reduces, the flow um, increases in velocity and imparts its momentum on the um, turbine blades and exits. So it's converting high pressure, low speed flow here to low pressure, high speed flow to generate momentum to um, spin this turbine. Now, diffusers do the opposite. Instead of um, reducing cross-sectional area, diffusers increase in cross-sectional cross -sectional area with distance. And what this has is it converts um, low-pressure high-speed flow into high-pressure low-speed flow. So basically the, the exact opposite of a nozzle. And so the example of the diffuser on this device is on the compressor side. So as the air is brought in, as we said, the... Um, the, the velocity of the air is accelerated by the um, compressor blades. And as it exits out here, you can see that the cross section area is increasing. Now, as it's increasing, the, and the air flows up here, um, as it flows up, because the area is increasing, its velocity reduces and its pressure goes up. So then we can end up with a high pressure um, in this manifold, um, which forces air into the engine. <coughs> So you can see the now the difference between nozzle and diffuser and how um, basically they're used in this one device here, um, turbocharger. So we've got a nozzle on this side um, creating a high speed flow and the compressor on this side using the diffuser to generate um, high pressure um, air to go into the engine. Now if you look at the flow through a nozzle, I'm not going to um, derive this. Um, you can look in a textbook um, to find the uh, derivation of this. But it can be shown that the um, the velocity and the the change in velocity and the change in cross-section area is related like this. Okay, And basically it's related to the um, velocity of the fluid or the Mach number um, of the fluid. And this has some quite interesting... Um, uh, implications which we kind of talked through um, on just now and the way we're going to do that is we're going to do some what-if scenarios we're going to consider what happens if we change the Mach number and what happens to the change in how the velocity changes with the area as we change Mach number 
So we're going to start off with um, subsonic flow. So a Mach number less than one. Okay. Now if m is less than one, then m squared is less than one. And if m squared is less than one, then m squared minus one is negative. So this would be a negative on this side. So if it's subsonic, then it's negative on this side. And these are opposite sides. We've got positive on this side, negative on this side. So in other words, as um, the change in area increases, the flow decreases. Or as the change of area uh, decreases, then the velocity will increase. And that makes sense. That's what we're used to. So we're talking about in the previous slide that with the nozzle, that as the area decreases, the velocity increases. And that's true for subsonic flow. Now, what happens if we consider supersonic flow? Well, if m is greater than 1, okay, uh, so we set this to greater than 1, then m squared is also greater than 1. So this term then becomes positive because um, if m squared is greater than 1, then you minus 1, you end up with a positive number. So it means then that the um, change in velocity and the change in area are now of the same sign, not the opposite sign. So in other words, if um, we increase the cross-sectional area, then we also increase the velocity. And this is true for supersonic flow. Okay, so that's quite an interesting result. And talk a bit that talk about that a bit more in the next slide. But first let's just consider what happens if we set m equals to one. So we're saying it's sonic flow. Well, if m equals one, then m squared is one and one minus uh, one is zero. So this term disappears. So what we end up with is that the change of area with respect to the area is zero. So um, we know that if the derivative is um, zero, then we must be a maxima or a minima for our function. And if we take the second derivative of this, it's, we find that it's positive. Therefore, um, we know that a is a minimum because the rate of change. If the rate of change is positive, then it's um, then it's a minimum, not a maximum. So if um, so, if we said that the um, we're we know that we're now t at a minimum. So if we're going along our duct and we're changing the area, we're now a minimum. This is termed the throat. Okay, and um, what the throat is is the throat is the area in the pipework where the um, the the flow is sonic okay is it the speed is it the same speed as sound so why is that important well this is um, all the the equation on the previous slide and the implications of that were exploited by um, the scientist Carl uh, de Laval and he designed a convergent divergent nozzle to basically accelerate steam at supersonic velocities and you can see a schematic of the nozzle here and also a photo of it underneath as well, one of his actual nozzles. So if we consider we're starting off at, um, you know, P1 over here. And because the, as we decrease the area um, in the subsonic region, um, the velocity of the gas increases. Now, when we get to this throat, this minimum here, the velocity um the Mach number approaches one, it becomes sonic. And to then increase it further to go sub supersonic, what this nozzle um, cleverly does is it then starts increasing the area with respect to downstream with respect to downstream distance. So the change as you're changing the cross-sectional area, you're also increasing the velocity. And you can then therefore accelerate the gas up to supersonic um, uh, speeds. And because of the, um, uh, the, the, the innovation of this nozzle, and um, it's now actually named after its inventor, and the term de Laval nozzle is used to describe a general nozzle that has this convergent uh, divergent shape. 